And now God says, I am going to reward you for letting me use you like this in glory. And in glory means in my presence. So in heaven, you're going to stand before God. He's going to say, I have a number of rewards for you for when you entered into the Holy of Holies in prayer and you allowed my spirit to use you. Here's what you accomplished. And you're going to say, Lord, you're the one who accomplished. Oh, no, you let me use your vehicle for me to accomplish. For God to accomplish earthly things, he needs an earthly body. That earthly body becomes you. Now, I'm going to say something else. There are two intercessors in heaven. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Son intercedes for you. God the Holy Ghost intercedes through you. Shall I say it again? Two intercessors. The Son, the High Priest, intercedes for us. But the Holy Spirit intercedes through us. And through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The Son intercedes for me that I might be welcomed into the Holy of Holies. That I might be allowed into the Holy of Holies. It's the intercession of the Son that gives me access into the throne room. It's the intercession of the Spirit That allow me to be used to change destinies of nations and kingdoms and people. Don't miss what I said. This is deep, deep, deep. So Jesus prays so I can get in. And the Holy Spirit prays when I'm in. And now when I'm in, I am used literally by the Holy Spirit to change Destinies, nations, people. And I'm yearning and I'm longing with groanings that can't be uttered. And this is where speaking in tongues is useless. Oh, I got your attention now. Because this is not praying with the Spirit. This is praying in the Spirit. Tongues come into being in the second realm. Not the third You say, well, I'm interceding. You see, you've not understood what the Bible teaches on this. Praying with the Spirit is what the Bible calls tongues. We call it tongues, my prayer language. But that is used in warfare against the devil. That is also used in praise. There are three kinds of tongues, and I want to get into that right now. Maybe some some other time I will. But in the Holy of Holies, it's the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, using the human spirit, literally to call on God the Father. And the Holy Spirit is making requests now. So powerful. And suddenly something happens. Psalm 31 Verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. This is a place of secrecy. This is a place that uh, only you and God are, are a part of it. That's why it's called the secret place. It's called the secret place because it's not to be known by anyone else but you. And God starts to reveal to you His secrets. The secrets of the Lord belong to them that fear Him, the Bible says. Isn't it wonderful to be given secrets? Heavenly secrets from God Himself? Don't you remember... In Genesis, it says, Abraham drew near. And the next thing we read is God saying, Shall I hide from Abraham the things I'm about to do? And that 
God reveals a secret to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham, the intercessor, the Holy Spirit, uses Abraham to talk to the Father. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do right? What, what if there's 50? How about 45? How about 30? How about 20? How about 10? Only a true intercessor can draw near. And only to the intercessor, God says, shall I hide from them the things I'm about to do? So secrets are revealed in the third realm. The secret of, of, of the Lord belongs to the one who fears him, but he's entered that realm. It's a place of such light it's a place of such peace and tranquility. And it's the place where the secrets of the Lord are revealed to, to, the, to the human heart. Jim, would you play as, as, as we pray right now? You are my hiding place. You know, the, the, the hiding place is the Lord himself. But I love what it says in Psalm 31, 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence. Lift your hands and ask him to do this for you. To, to hide you in the secret of his presence. That his presence becomes your habitation. This is what Jesus talked about in John 15. If you abide in me and I in you. Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. This is the abiding place. And God wants every one of you there. Think about what peace you've been missing. What joy you've missed. What incredible miracles you've missed. Think about what what, what God had in store that have been really missed by you because your, your life has been the outer court where you say amen when you're done and you're, you go. And don't give the Lord the chance to start alluring you. I will allure her into the wilderness. Speak comfortably unto her, he says. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. He brings you in where His presence is so wealthy, so rich, so thick, so full, so abundant. And then you get in there. And Psalm 42, 7 is now reality. Deep calls unto, unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. Your billows, your waves are gone all over me, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm literally being pulled by the current of your waves. And you make me a, an instrument of intercession. So precious Jesus, bring us into that place. Let us begin to, to, to experience your depth, your person, your love, your abundance. Your mighty name. Bring us into that place of quiet rest. Into that place of such abundant peace. Your word says, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Thou shalt keep that one in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. It's only in that Holy of Holies it's possible. We cannot force our minds to think of you except in that Holy of Holies. Our minds naturally are at peace. And you are the preeminent one. You become our all in all in that place. We give you praise. And I pray that every person 
in this class, every person watching at home will experience that quiet place, that place where your presence is our hiding place. In your precious name I pray. Amen.